Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. Alright, let's address the elephant in the room. I know it's not Halloween. Alright, that's long past. But, when it came to my Halloween videos, I ran out of time and I couldn't upload everything I wanted to. So, that's why I'm uploading them past Halloween. But if you stop and look at it like this. At some point in time, it's going to be Halloween time again, October. So somebody eventually will stumble upon my videos and watch it around Halloween time. So, yeah. And I'm here today to talk to you about Goosebumps, More Monster Blood. This is the sequel to Monster Blood. And not only is it a sequel, but it's the first ever original Goosebumps episode that the network Fox Kids created on their own. Yes, they decided to deviate away from R.L. Stein book and create a very cool episode. This is the first. There are three others, but the three others are a trilogy. What is that? Chiliology. I was shocked and amazed to find out they created that um, trilogy on their own. One day I will talk about that, but for now, let's talk about more Monster Blood. Now, there are about four Monster Blood books in the series, and the TV show decided, you know, they don't have the money to do the other sequels. Why? Because it involves giants. Basically, I think in the second book, um... Evans like hamster turns like giant and just goes crazy I think and the third book Evan himself turns into a giant and I forget what happens in the fourth but in a way it basically deals with like giants and they just didn't have the money to constantly make people giant I mean you saw how Trigger looked in like the first episode and stuff and how much of him we saw so i understand why they did this and you know they came up with a really cool episode this one was probably creepier than the first but it's more comedic than the first that's the only problem the second one is way 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 too comedic but when you think of the terror of them being thirty thousand feet in the air and there's monster blood eating everybody it's pretty spooky and so that's what this entire episode revolves around. It's a, it literally picks off moments after the first one. Evan's on a plane. He's heading to Atlanta. He just got through telling the story to Curtis. And then so in comes Conan. Conan is a stereotypical bully and even dresses like one. He's dressing in kind of like a um, cut off shirt. I think he has spikes, stuff like that. Think of Bulk from Power Rangers, and this is this dude's personality. And so Conan wants to hear more about this monster blood. He doesn't believe it, but he wants to hear more about it. And so Evan tells him a little bit more, and he just thinks Evan is just cuckoo for cuckoo pu on Cocoa Puffs and stuff. And he doesn't believe why Curtis would believe this, so he starts picking on Curtis. Then in comes the girl. I think her name is Julie. And she doesn't like Conan, and she's very sassy to him. And she's dressed very 90s. Um, they, they all are wearing their camp uniform, like their shirt. But she's wearing like a blazer on top of that. That was very 80s to do, and a little bit of 90s to do. But this is early 90s, so, or mid, early mid, so, you know. And so she's really the only one who would stand up to Conan. She cannot stand him. I cannot stand him. And so, like, he's just telling them, like, you know, y'all are crazy stuff and that. And so, Trigger is barking at the monster blood because it's overflowing in Evan's suitcase. Well, as you guessed it, the monster blood has escaped. And it's down in the cargo and it goes down into the storage. So, the one, the, um, the male flight attendant, he goes to check on it. It starts oozing from the ceiling and it devours him. It has a nasty slurpy noise and so while this going on conan's being a butthead and he's terrorizing curtis curtis jumps out of his seat and freaks out and everything but a female flight attendant gets on to all three boys conan is being even more of a butthead by taking evan's seat and making him sleep next to the woman who's snoring that lady who's snoring she is hamming it up so this is a very comedic episode and it does get on your nerves for the first couple of minutes because it's very comedic. 
Yeah, but Conan, man, God, I can't stand him. So anyways, um, at some point in time, I think Evan goes to like the restroom and, uh, well, no, a man goes to the restroom. I forgot about that. And the man's in the restroom and he's washing his face with like that hand soap. Ugh. <laughs> and so like, anyways, he's washing his face and his eyes are closed. He got soap in his eye. And then when he puts his hand in something, he smears it on his face. But it's the monster blood. It's not what he thinks it is. He thinks it's water. The man should have known water does not feel chunky and clunky. And <laughs> but it's gross how it's all over that man's face. But unlike the first installment, it's now chunky and clunky. It's not like smooth and everything. And so people are waiting in line for the restroom. Evan's waiting and he sees a little bit of monster blood coming from the door. He freaks out. He tells everybody the flight attendant thinks he's being like, you know, disturbing everybody. So she forces him to sit in his seat. Then as you know, he's desperately trying to explain to people that there is monster blood on the plane and the captain has to um, land the plane. And so Conan's like, this dude's crazy. We don't know him because they all, the three of them went to camp. Now they all go to school together, but they don't hang out. Next thing you know, he convinces the flight attendant to go check on the other flight attendant and to go check on the guy in the restroom because the guy just disappeared. She goes and next thing you know, the monster blood is coming from like the floor, um, the, the, the department down below and it's trying to bust through the door and she is scared. Then you hear the slurping noises. Then next thing you know, one by one, everybody's getting slurped up. They're getting devoured by the monster blood, leaving only the kids left behind. The kids are now freaking out. They don't know where everybody's at and they see the monster blood coming through the aisle. And he tells them like, you know, this is weird. It looks different. It's clunkier and stuff and chunkier. We get one of the corniest lines ever. The girls all like, I prefer the smooth from the chunky um, style and everything. I'm like, that's so corny, 90s, man. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, they don't know how they're going to get rid of the monster blood. But they realize something. Kurt is smart as he is. He realized that the monster blood is attracted to movement, vibrations. Which is not what happened in the first one, but whatever, I'll buy it. And so they start throwing stuff at it, hoping they can, like, you know, distract it so they can get to the cabin and get to the captain. But something happens. Conan throws some of the food onto, like, you know, the monster blood. And the uh, airplane food looks disgusting. And they realize something. The monster blood is having a bad reaction to it. It throws up. So they realize it's plain food that can like destroy monster blood. And so like they have to get back into the um the back cabin and get all the food. But there's no way they can do it with the monster blood in the aisle. So they realize something. They can just go where they put like their um their luggage and stuff. And since Curtis is the tiniest one. He has to go and do it, but he doesn't want to because there's dust up there and he's allergic to everything. But they tell him, look, man, the fate of like our lives are at stake. So he mans up and he goes up there. And so he's man he manages to get back there, but he can't unlock the cart. The brakes are on. So Conan does something um, surprising. He sacrifices himself. Um, so that Curtis, no, 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 wait, Curtis is still on top. He can't get down on the floor because the monster blood will get him. So Curtis sacrificed, not Curtis, but, oh, I'm getting the names messed up. Conan sacrifices himself. I could not believe that dude did it. And because he's such a butthead and everything, but he really showed that, hey, man, I don't want to die and I don't want y'all to die. <laughs> and I was very shocked and surprised by that. So he's, um, makes the distraction big enough so that Evan can run back there and help Curtis. But it's the, the, the break is on and they can't get it off. So Julie, she starts doing a little sacrifice of her own. And she pretend like she gets like a sheet and tell like she's like, you know, uh, one of those people who tries to like, you know, fight a bull and everything. What she says is even more corny. She's like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm like laughing. I'm busted out 
laughing. And she's like, yeah, yeah, come here, come get me, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so corny, man. <laughs> but anyway, they managed to um uh, free the lock and the break and everything, and they shoved the food into the monster blood. And it's a cool effect. It's squirming, it's making belching noise, and it starts throwing up food. And it's a great effect. Then the people come back, but we don't see the people come back. It just happens like uh, when it cuts to another scene. And everybody is back and just like freaked out about what happened. Well, when the plane lands and everything, um, a bunch of scientists on board and they capture the monster blood. And so like, you know, everybody's talking about it. The kids are getting along. They now become friends. Julie gives Evan her phone number for when he's in town to call her. Ooh. <laughs> And then Evan sees Trigger, and we finally get to see Trigger again. And then, so Evan needs to go get his luggage, but there's a problem. See, earlier in the episode, a teeny tiny ant stuck to some monster blood. And of course, what happened? That ant grew giant size. And it it's freaky looking, and Evan just hollers and screams. Now, the CGI on the ant squirming is not the best. It's freaky looking, but it's not the best. And then, like I said before, this was a pretty cool episode. The, it's scarier for the fact that they're thousands of feet in the air. But other than that, it's a very comedic episode. But it's a nice episode, so I'm okay with the comedy and everything. And the cast is, like, really cool. It's like, you know, um, you got, the like, the nerd who's, like, really short and he's allergic to everything. You got the girl who draws and she can stand up to the bully. And then you have the bully who's a butthead. <laughs> now wasn't that spooky? Alright, well I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>